weather with Damian Lotus. We had a very active, severe weather period today. Multiple tornadoes across the state. Pretty much a tornado outbreak. And I'm not going to be surprised if we have double-digit tornadoes reported across the state here because we had a very active day. A tornado watch still continues here for all these counties highlighted in green until 10 o'clock, so for about the next 45 minutes or so. This did include the Oklahoma City metro, but now that the storms have cleared and the cold front has taken over, we're going to see some cooler weather, but that's why our tornado watch has expired. As of right now, the line of severe thunderstorms continues here across eastern and the southeastern parts of the state. We still have one major storm that I'm watching here very closely. It's pushing its way towards McAllister right now. And the reason why I'm watching this one specifically is whenever you start to see these really bright colors, here on our velocity data, this is when you can start to see the 60, 70, even 80 mile an hour straight line winds. And these storms, in addition to the wind damage, the tornado damage is extensive here across this part of the state. We have Brian Winslow down here tracking it. So, Brian, I hear you're telling me that you're going over to the prison because of a possible fire. Go ahead and give me an update. Yeah, Damien, we're on the south side of Holdenville Prison looking to the north. There's multiple units, uh, I believe City of Holdenville, Holdenville Fire Department, Hughes County Sheriff. Uh, when we arrived on the scene, the firefighters had a water spout coming off of the truck up onto the building. It, it's probably very hard to see in the shot there, but there are firefighters on the roof inspecting. So it looks like there was a fire. We, we did not see the fire. Um, there are a lot of emergency units uh, on the scene and in the vicinity, even behind us and uh, on both sides of the road, east and west of us. Uh, we have not heard of any reports of injuries. Uh, we're staying here on scene, and uh, when we find out more, we'll let you know. Back to you, Damien. All right, Brian, thanks so much. So this is the damage I'm tracking right now, but this is some of the video from earlier today. This is some of the tornadoes that our trackers have been on here across the state. So this is from Alpha earlier near uh, Kingfisher, Dover up in Kingfisher County, a little lined out tornado right there. I think this is from Aaron Brackett in the Interceptor. So yeah, this was one of the many tornadoes reported across the state here. So let's go ahead and switch from that one because we had a lot of videos from our trackers. This one's from Corey Inman. He was up in northern Oklahoma tracking these storms. So this one's from Hunter, which is northeast of Enid out here. So this was the storm that Corey Inman was tracking. You can see that's another small lined out tornado here across northern parts of the state. Not only do we have to deal with the tornadoes, we also had some flooding that we're going to show you. But hey, here's a, a video from our chopper. You can start to see the dust getting kicked up as the tornado makes contact with the ground. This was from uh, near Loyal earlier this afternoon in Kingfisher County. So this is whenever this storm right here reached its peak intensity. You can really start to see it as it starts to wind up right there. These storms were just spinning all day. And in addition to the tornadoes they produced, large hail, damaging winds, and flooding rainfall was reported. This is uh, from Kingfisher. And I'm not going to lie, I haven't grown up here. I've seen this a lot. Highway 33, Highway 81 does not do very well here whenever you start to get heavy rainfall. The creek floods pretty bad down here as well. So we're going to be dealing with this here as we head into the overnight hours because we're still going to see some heavy rainfall across parts of the state. So let's go from that. In addition to the uh, wind damage that I'm tracking, also we got some pretty good hail continuing south of Calvin pushing its way off to the southeast. This is about quarter size plus hailstones here across parts of the state. So zooming out, taking more of a broad view of the storms I'm tracking right now. This is going to be off to the northeast of the Oklahoma City metro. We got some storms continue to push their way off to the east. Muskogee right now getting a pretty good shower and storm pushing its way in. But the main line, the main severe weather is pushing its way southeast of the Oklahoma City metro. These are the storms I was tracking earlier from Seminole. Holdenville produced a couple tornadoes that made its way through the state. And then the very southern part of the storm is just now pushing its way south along I-35, pushing its way into Ardmore right there. So I'm going to continue to track these here as we head into the overnight hours. So here's the more defined area. You can see that cold front just now pushing its way into Ardmore. So yeah, definitely heads up for you folks in Ardmore for that for sure. So this is what I'm going to be tracking. Seven-day forecast. We'll see a chilly start because of the cold front. We'll be in the 60s tomorrow. So yeah, that's going to be a big change. More thunderstorm chances moving in the forecast for tomorrow. I'll continue to track that and I'll keep you forewarned.